right on the nose. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night church service. Let's stand for prayer, please. Greg, would you lead us, please? Uh, public service announcement that you know just with everything that's going on around here I, w I would appreciate it and like I said if everybody comes back to the clothing room for whatever reason to come wearing a mask I just got some in today I ordered like a box of 50 they were the cheap ones like the ones we got but if you don't have one I'll give you one and if you don't stay stay six feet away from me I'm going to try to stay six feet away from you. And, and I know it's something that, that I'm going to have to be reminded too, but the thing that, I, that just kind of hit me today is that I'm not really worried about getting it, but if, if one of you get it and I've been around you, I'm going to get put in jail, <laughs> you know, and quarantine, and I don't want to be put in quarantine. And I, I, I know Dean and the guys that have been in, been in there can testify that, that don't sound like any kind of fun whatsoever for me. So I just re I just soon be safe, and uh, I'll try to remember to to give you guys the same courtesy too. But all right, I appreciate it. All right, Joe. Was doing good a little while ago. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord tonight again. Praise him again. Praise him again. Hallelujah. He lives. No doubt. No doubt. Just to add on to what Brother Steve said, you know, that stuff is so deadly that if it hits me in my condition, I might not stand a chance. We can't afford our brothers getting sick and getting hurt. We can't afford to, to, to hurt each other that way, is what I'm trying to say. Let's, let's just be uh, considerate. Cautious, you know, if I'm not feeling right, it's okay to go to over there and say, hey, I'm sick. This is deadly stuff we're playing with. This is not no easy flu to get a, a Pac-Man pack in 20 days. And this is something that's deadly. And I don't want to hurt nobody in that state of mind. Amen? Amen. Amen? So let's love on each other. Let's trust God for who he says he is and the power of the blood. There's guys here that will get that or die instantly. God forbid. Some of us are really sick. Skeletal wise, nerves, you know, lungs. Oh, yeah. And I've heard even the strongest guy get it. When it gets you, man, it'll get you. So let's just pray for that, that, that God's hands still, will still stay upon us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Brother Steve. Let's go to page 44 tonight. That's the gospel glory again. Let's thank God for who he is. Keep thanking him for all the stuff that hasn't happened to us. We want to worship you tonight, my Lord, and give you our heart. Let our worship be pleasing unto you tonight, my King.
133. It's been a long time I was singing this song, but let's worship God tonight. I feel like my spirit here, he needs this song. Praise you, my Lord. Just hum it along with me. Just hum it along. Come on. Once again for prayer. Anyone have any prayer requests? I know we have a bunch of them. Is, is Reverend Wooten sick? Is not feeling well? Don't you don't know? Just okay. Well, well, let's say a prayer for Reverend Wooten. I mean, he may just, just be tired and need, need a break. And pray for the campus. Pray for Brother McFarland to bring the yes. message tonight. Absolutely. Pray for uh, I saw Sister Foster for a few minutes today. She's looking forward to coming out Friday, I think. Amen. So Amen. She's looking forward to getting back in church. So pray for the guys in, you know, pray for the guys in quarantine. I, I know, I, I, once again, I thought about it today. I, they're not, I don't guess they're sick. They haven't been, they haven't been tested positive or anything, but they need prayer just like Dean needed prayer for, you know, having to having to be in there and not be able to go out and not do anything. That's just Amen. you know, I, I just I really thought about it today and realized how bad that's gotta be. And I I pray for them to to get out of there and I don't wanna go there. I pray for Sister Rhonda. Hope she I haven't heard anything, but I hope she's getting better. I know she's probably worried herself sicker than she probably has to be. Miss Christina. Get her, get her back so we can continue the, the GED course. Maybe get back to some kind of normalcy. And Bill? For, uh, Dan Harris. Dan Harris, yep. Right. Bob, yeah. Dave Warren, yeah. Continue prayer for Gerald. Yeah, Bob and uh, Stephen. Ledgers, Reverend Ledger, I saw him this morning. He seems he's he's doing okay. Yeah, Aaron. Uh, the staff and group of workers keeping everything together just by leaving for having some influential people step yeah. behind for now. Okay. Yeah. Staff. And Doug and, and uh, Brother Brogdon and yes, sir. Your wife and kids. Your wife and kids. Will, his kids. Anybody trying to quit smoking? <laughs> yeah, pray for anybody that's 
trying to quit. And, and I know that, I know some people don't understand uh, praying for unloved saved ones, but you know, I don't know. I know that there's one person in my family that's not saved because they told me they weren't. So, and there may be even more that I don't know about. So I don't see anything wrong with praying for, praying for unloved or unsaved loved ones because you just don't know. So I, I pray, pray for my unsaved loved one that I may not want to mention their name. Yeah. Unspoken, yeah. Uh, Dennis, who, uh, you Dennis, you left today? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, pray for him. Yeah. Dennis, he left because he thought he was going to have to stay here another week because of quarantine and he didn't want to lose his job so he left. Now he didn't have to really. So pray for him. Chris, huh? Christopher? I mean Christian? Unspoken? Jacob? Personal. Personal? Okay. Will? Spoken. Okay. All right. Dean. I just uh, testified of something I guess I, I, uh, I know, you know, we, we come here and uh, we're, we're not too thrilled when we first get through these gates. But as time goes on, you know, uh, we, we hopefully we realize that we're here for something much more. And we're, there is a reason that we're here, not just because of. Because uh, we don't have God in our life. And I know I'm not always the perfect person who preaches. But I'm not preaching, I'm just saying from my heart, I, I'm a far better man because of the Lord in my life than when I first Amen. got here. Amen. 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 I, uh, I've had friends and I've lost friends since I've been here, and I've gained old ones back. Thank you, William. And uh, these guys really do care for us. They stand up here and they preach. Do when they say they love us, they really do. Uh, I just hope we can find our way through our own ego and guilt and whatever else we're holding on to to uh, give ourselves a break and look at the Lord for something. Amen. 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 I agree, man. There's some there's some big time politicians and leaders out there that are having to make decisions off the cuff and are making worse ones than they. They get made around here sometimes, so <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So you know, we don't always make the right decisions, but we always. I think I honestly believe they're always trying to make the right decisions around here, and, and dealing with so many different types of people from so many different. And this COVID thing, you know, it's it's got to be rough. It's got to be rough. So yeah, we pray for them too. All right, anybody else? All right, let's stand for prayer, please. Jerome, do you mind, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening. We thank you for thy love, thy grace, thy mercy, Lord. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness to each and every one of us, Lord. And Father, we see your hand at work every day, every hour, Father. We thank you, Lord, for those that are coming out of this COVID thing, Lord. And blessed Father, for those that are still dealing and battling this thing, Lord, we know, Lord, you're able, you're capable, Lord. And blessed Father, we just ask you, Lord, that you would undertake them physically, Lord Jesus, and that you would grant them the comfort, Lord. And blessed Father, while you're seeing them through these things physically, Lord, that you would reach down, Lord, and touch their spirits, Lord. Oh, blessed Father, we're asking for the awakening, Lord. Of thy spirit, Lord. We ask you that our spirits be quickened, Lord. And that is the only way, Lord, you'll be able to communicate with us, Lord, if our spirits are quickened. And we thank you for each and every thing that you do for us, Father. And 
And bless the Father, you know the need of each and every one, Lord, who are feeling under the weather, Lord. We ask a, a special prayer for Gerald, Lord. We ask a special prayer for Dave, Bob, and Stephen, and Miss Christina, and Sister Foster, and yeah. Sister Rhonda, Lord Jesus. Brother Ledger, Lord, and Sister Sharon, Lord Jesus. For each and every one, Lord, those that are still in quarantine, Lord, you know all about each and every one. Blessed Father, your word said you are the great physician, Father. Yes. And Father, we believe, Father, we believe in thy divine healing, Lord. You've raised the dead, Lord. You've given yes. Come on. legs to the lame, Lord. Hallelujah. You've given hearing to the deaf, Lord. Yes. You've Hallelujah. given speech to the mute, Father. Oh, Lord. There's nothing too large. There's Hallelujah. nothing Hallelujah. too small that you can't handle, Father. Yes. And Blessed Father, if you continue to look down upon us tonight, Lord, we're asking for that anointing, Father, that can only come from thee, Lord. Yes. Continue to bless the playing of the piano, Lord. Continue to bless the singing, Lord. Bless the gift, bless the gift giver, Lord. And bless it, Father, for this unworthy soul, Lord, that will be preaching thy word tonight, Lord. We're asking for thy touch tonight, Lord. We're asking for understanding, Lord. We're asking for clarity, Lord. Grant us clarity of mind, thought, and speech, Lord. May all that setting done is pleasing unto thee. For all that you do, Father, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And the ushers, please. Blessed Lord, we come to you once again, humbling ourselves as much as we know how. We thank you, Father, for your grace your mercy, your love. We thank you for the banner of us, which is love, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom. We ask that you bless those that give. We ask that you bless those that want to give. We ask that you bless everyone in this building yes, tonight, Lord. Yes, and we praise you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Joe's going to lead us in another song. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, glory. God is good. God is good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you guys for loving God and loving the mission and giving from your pockets on your heart. It's very important that we keep that attitude all the time on track. Praise God. Let's go to 558. 554. I'm losing it. Where am I? <laughs> 554. I'm sorry. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We adore you, my Lord.
message tonight. Brother Jerome. Good evening. Good evening. I trust everyone is doing well this evening. If there has been any comfort during this lockdown is the fact that I've been going to bed by 9.30 every night. That's good sometimes, uh, but far too often I'd find myself up at 2.30. And I'm up. <laughs> I'm up. But, uh, but the Lord has had shown me some things that I could get accomplished at that hour of the morning as well. Uh, Tonight, I want to uh, uh, talk about God's love. Uh, Oftentimes, uh, we speak a lot about God's love, and and oftentimes, we take God's love for granted. But that is something we should never, ever get tired of hearing nor proclaiming. And uh, I thank God for his love for me. And... uh, uh, before we read the, uh, the scriptural text tonight, I just want to, to share an illustration with you that I thought was, was kind of nice. And it, and it reads, Alice thought she had the perfect fiancé. As she was getting to know Michael and his family, she was impressed by how much his parents loved each other. They're so thoughtful, she said. Why, your dad even brings your mom a cup of hot coffee in bed every morning. Alice and Michael eventually got married. And as they were leaving the wedding, Alice again remarked on Michael's loving parents and his mom's morning coffee in bed. She said, tell me, does it run in the family? And Michael replied, it sure does, but you should know, I take after my mom. (laughs) Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, that's a different type of love. It's a different type of love. But sometimes when it comes to relationships, love isn't all that is cracked up to be. But when it comes to our relationship with God, his love exceeds our wildest expectations. He loves us because he chose us from the very foundation of the world to be his 
special people. That is his bride. God loves us beyond anything we could ever imagine. And he longs for us to experience the fullness of his love. And if we want real love, if we want ideal love, if we want perfect love, it is not going to be found in any other relationship outside of a relationship with God. So I just, I just want us to understand that true love only comes from God. Only comes from God. And if you would be so kind, grab your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 5. The book of Romans, chapter 5. The book of Romans, chapter 5, starting and ending at verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise God. Praise God. Most gracious Father, we thank thee this evening. We thank you, Lord, for thy perfect love, for thy perfect faithfulness, for thy undying love and faithfulness to each and every one of us. And Father, we're asking, Lord, that you allow thy spirit to spend just a few moments with us tonight, Lord. Touching hearts, touching minds, Lord. We're just asking, Lord, for thy help tonight, Lord. And for all that you do, we'll give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. God loves us just because. And when I was a, when I was a young fellow... And I used to, to buy uh, uh, roses for, my, uh, for the women I thought I was uh, 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 in love with. Now, I'm not a romantic by no means. But, you know, they give you a little card and they want you to, to write something personal, something loving, something romantic. And I always put on the card, just because. Just because. Let that individual fill in the rest. Let it be on them. I paid my 80 bucks. <laughs> yes, that's why I'm single today. For attitude like that. But just because, fill in the blank. God loves us just because. One significant aspect about God's love is that, that God loves us just because. Why? Just because we are his special treasures. And he desires to draw us into a deeper love relationship with him. Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn. The Jeremiah 31 and 3. Every minute, every day since we heard God's call to come and meet with him, he's been pursuing love, relationship with us, seeking to draw us as close as a mother draws her children close to herself. First, God loves us because it is part of his very nature. That is, God is love. And because of his love for us, he tells us to love others. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. 1 John 4 and 7. In fact, God loved us so much, he sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. To take our place and, and die the death that, that we deserve. And as the scripture 
told us tonight, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Second, God loves us because he created us in his image and according to his likeness. And, and while sin has destroyed some of that image and likeness, God still loves us. And why should God love us? Because of us. We have a, a unique value. And in fact, God made us to have a relationship with him. That's our unique value. Because we're unworthy. We can't do anything under our own strength, under our own power. We can't come to God when we want to. He has to draw us. That's why we're unique. It is his power that draws us. We're unique. We're special. We're treasures. We are the apple. We are the apple in God's eyes. Praise God. No other creation has been given redemptive salvation. We are the only ones that can be redeemed. We are the only ones that can be brought back to our natural state. As Adam had when he was walking in the garden. Communing with God. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Genesis 1 and 26. We've been made in God's image and likeness. And so within our DNA lay the potential of having an intimate relationship with him. We have it in us. When God formed us, when God breathed the breath of life inside of our nostrils, we became, we became a living soul. A soul that God can touch, that God can reach out, that God can draw, and that God could grant eternal life. He loved us. And he still does. The Bible says, God set his affection upon his people to love them. Not because they were numerous in number or greater than all other people, but rather quite the opposite. He chose to love them. That's it. I have nothing to offer God. I have nothing. I am nothing. I'm dirt. I'm dirt. I'm clay. I'm unworthy. I'm unholy. What do I have? I have nothing. I am nothing. God's love is everlasting. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Psalm 103, 17 and 8. Before we existed, God loved us. Amen. Long before we were ever born, God fastened his affection upon us and decided to love us. Not because we earned it, not because mom and dad wanted it to, but because that is who he is. Before we were born, God knew the worst about us. Therefore, nothing we do will disillusion him to where God would have to say, didn't see that coming. I guess I made a mistake. I want you to know God does not make mistakes. And so God not only loves us from everlasting, but he will love us to everlasting. His love will never end. This is an eternity, long love, relationship. Praise God. 
Praise God. God's love is unchanging. Does God ever change? For I am the Lord, I change not. Malachi 3, 6 and 8. But in that particular verse, when you read where God is in all caps, talking about the Father, talking about the Father. But we also read numerous examples of God changing due to the people's repentance. In fact, this is a promise God gives. If so, be they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of evil, which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. Jeremiah 26 and 3. In such, God is creating opportunities for us to, to turn from our sins and to escape the punishment due to our sins. So when the Lord said, I do not change, what is God's unchangeable nature? May I suggest that in his love, he desires to bless us. But when we turn away from God and we rebel against his word, then he changes his method and brings what? Discipline. But he does not want to hurt us, but to help us and to bring us back into relationship with him. In Proverbs it says, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. And so his love, God disciplines when we stray away from his love relationship and towards what is wrong and hurtful. Just as a parent disciplines their child when they have done something wrong or, or when they're about to be hurt through their actions, God disciplines us as well. And, and, and we ought to understand, as our parents discipline us, it was not to, to hurt us, but it was to bring us back, reestablish boundaries. And God does the same thing, to bring us back so we can understand our boundaries. So that we, we, we cannot stand to be separated from God. God will never give up on us. Nor will he abandon us. Even though we may have given up and abandoned him. And that is very comforting to know. That while we may put other things in front of God. God still loves us. And we'll... Discipline us so that we will not stray too far. Raise up a child in the ways of God. Even though he stray, he will not stray too far where he can come back. Amen. Praise God, brother. Praise God. Prime example, the prodigal son. The prodigal son. God is forever looking down at us. Waiting for us to come back. And when we repent. That is when we turn back to God from the way we were going. God relents. That is God changes his, his discipline into a blessing. Therefore God's love toward us is unchanging. Even if it leads to discipline. See we have to, grow, we have to wrap our heads around that. Even, even when God has his thumb in our backs, God is telling us, I love you, my child. I do this because I don't want you to go astray. I don't want to lose you. I want you to stay established. Number four, God loves us in rebellion. 
We can see God's amazing, unchanging love for us in the Old Testament. Oh, the people of Israel. Oh, they did many evil things. They, they worship many, many gods. God called them back. They came back. And they walked away. They came back. They walked away. God still declared his unfailing, unchanging, everlasting love for them. How can I give you up, Israel? How can I let you go? How can I destroy you? Finally, in love, he disciplined them. And the Bible clearly states God disciplines those he loves. And so while we may have failed in one way or another, God's love never fails and is always going to be there for us. And his love for us, he always brings us back to himself. And for this to take place, however, we must confess our sins and, and repent. That is, we must turn away from our sins and towards God. When we do, God love will overflow into our hearts and into our lives. God loves us without limits. God's love is infinite. His love has no limitations, no boundaries. Thus, we will never be able to go beyond God's love. The Apostle Paul said, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints, what is the breadth and the length and depth and height? Ephesians 3, 17, B and 18. Paul then said, and to know, <laughs> and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. If there was such a word or such a phrase that, that resonates in my heart is the fullness of God. God wants us to have every inch of him. Everything that he has for us, God wants us to embrace. God wants us to yearn. God wants us to seek that. Seek all of him. Praise God. God's love is limitless. And there is no situation we will face that he will not give us the strength, the encouragement, and the hope to see us through. God does not parcel out his love. Rather, his love is boundless and endless as it flows towards us. It literally floods our hearts. God's love would never fail because it is by his grace and not upon anything that we do. Undying, unchanging, unfailing love because it all flows from God. God's love is filled with grace. God's love is inseparable because it's linked it is connected to his grace. And his grace is the basis upon which he loves us. He loves us. Because he extends his grace on us. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Romans 5, 20 and B. God's love is so great that no sin is greater than God's ability to forgive. We just must confess and repent. We see God's grace in his unchanging love. And as we read the story of the prodigal son, he wanted to go party. He wanted to live the life. And the father said, be gone, my son. And he left. And he lived the life. He partied. And the Bible clearly teaches us when the money ran out, when the party stopped, when the girls left, 
Nobody would feed him. This is a Jew. He found himself in a, in a, in a, in a, in a pigsty. A Jew around pork? No. Uh-uh. Yeah. And when he woke up, he said, oh, no. <laughs> pop, pop. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm going home. My father's servant. Oh. And you know what? The father, standing on the top of the hill, looking, looking in the horizon, trying to get a glimpse of his lost son. Hey, and when he saw his son, Pop ain't stay still. Uh-uh. Arms wide, he was running down the hill. <laughs> running down the hill to meet his son. And can you imagine when they wrapped their arms about each other? They hugged and kissed. He took a bath, got the ring again. They killed the fatted calf. Man, he never parted like that. That was a real party. He came home to pop. Yeah. He came home to real love. He came home to everlasting love. He came home to eternal love. He came home to ideal love. He came home to perfect love. Praise God. I was once that prodigal, but I came home. Praise God. Anyone who is in desperate need and willing to admit their condition, God shows his love. But we must be willing to say, I am messed up. I am needy. I am able to do this in my own strength. And God says, come and I'll take it because I love you. God's love for us is based upon his grace. And in God's grace, he made the way for us to come to him through his son, Jesus Christ. God's love is sacrificial. When it comes to human love, we like to see more action behind the words. As the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. But God put these words into action when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die upon the cross so that we could experience the fullness of his love and, and have that personal relationship with him. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15 and 13. Now, such love is foreign to us and to our sinful nature. Paul said, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 6 and 8. But Jesus went beyond dying for his friends. He died for his enemies. That is, he died for me. He died for you. He sacrificed himself for us so that we could have an everlasting love relationship with him. So and as I prepare to leave the platform, and so God's love is truly the greatest love of them all. God is immeasurably generous in his love for us. His love continues to give us and is never depleted. And he gives that love abundantly and without measure. The question becomes, are we ready to receive it? God wants to lavish his love upon us and let us reach out our hearts to him, knowing that in his love, he is reaching out 
his heart to us. Praise God. God loves us. He loves us. We say that so much. But do you understand that? Can you comprehend that? That no matter what you do, he still loves you, even when you can't love yourself. He still loves you. That's where our hope comes in. Because God has enough love to overtake your lack of love for yourself. Praise God. The love of God. The Bible clearly tells us there's not enough ink, there's not enough paper to put down into words the love that God has for each and every one of us. Again, I thank you guys for your kind attention. You guys are truly remarkable. Truly remarkable, and I thank you for it. I thank God for allowing me another opportunity to, to say some things about his unchanging love for us and how that permeates in me and how that makes me feel and, uh, and how excited it makes me. But I just want us to know there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to pull away from God. God's love will always be there. Amen. You cannot run his love. You cannot run his mercy. You cannot run his grace. You can't outrun God. Let's stand. Brother Joe, would you give us a closing prayer? You can sit. You can sit and pray. You can sit. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. My uh, God, we don't even know today how much we love this Father. Lord. We receive that word tonight from Pastor Father in an awesome way in our hearts so that that seed find its place in our hearts tonight, my God. As your Holy Spirit, Father, we remind us, Lord, that in many times, Lord, we cried out your name and you never came late. You didn't sleep no summer, Father. It was always our time. Father, we thank you for loving us first, my Lord. We thank you for being here in your home, in this house of the Lord. Father, all our provisions are being met, Lord. Keep speaking into our hearts, my King. Almighty God, help us to see more of your light. Father God, bless our men of God on this campus. Bless each and every man here tonight, my Lord, that we may sleep in, uh, in peace tonight and be all well with our soul. Father, we thank you so much for your word each and every day, my Lord.